Adventures of Sonic Episode 3. Lovesick Sonic. So, Sonic falls in love with someone? That's unique. And it's a horrible looking green woman with blue long hair being chased by Scratch. Grounder gets flung into a cactus somehow. Seriously, her design sucks. What species of Mobian even is she? I have a feeling that she's the... Uh, Renda? No, that's not it. Breezy. So, she's the hedgehog girl? Why does Sonic think she's pretty with that mouth? Sonic runs away for some reason instead of attacking the robots with the super speed and destroying them and untying her. Then he comes back with a disguise he shouldn't logically have. So I guess he could have ran home with the super speed to get all the materials he needs to get the robot stuck on the ground, but there's never any indication that he has a home with those materials in it to do this. It wouldn't be hard to just show him running back to his home and getting the disguise materials. It's really cringeworthy to see her pull his cheek and it stretches like it's made of rubber. That wouldn't happen. And Tails gets really jealous and surly that Breezy is flirting with Sonic. Why though? It's not like he's in love with Sonic. This kind of behavior would make sense for Amy, but she's not in this show. So I guess we don't need another character who does nothing around Sonic all the time. But it would have been more interesting. I love that Tails says Sonic should have quit while they were ahead. Great, Sonic should have quit while we were ahead. He's being snarky in the show for once. I think if I think I would have preferred that. It's filler, but it still is pretty creative that we have Sonic infatuated with a girl who isn't completely opposite to him in personality. It's like he's a Casanova. Like I can easily imagine Sonic could be the type around those pretty girls. Because he wants to get her flowers, he gets a map from a guy with an accent that I'm surprised exists in Mobius. And he runs around in a dangerous place, getting himself caught and hung upside down by a family of cannibals. Wait, what? Cannibals. Why do these even exist in this universe? This is the kitty show. Why would they ever try to do this to the hero of the world? Sonic somehow gets himself free from the cauldron completely unsatisfyingly, and reaches a place with a fire dragon who roars in an extremely silly, condescending way. So, uh, Sadium the comic had this lore among the dragons a little. Like, a Robotnik had never bossizing them all. So that was the explanation for why the dragons didn't take down Robotnik. Why didn't the dragons in this show take down Robotnik? There's just dragon out of nowhere. Sonic somehow manages to get on top of it. And, th and then he actually earns his victory for once, because he creates fire from the friction of running around its foot. So this victory makes sense. I'm not sure why Breezy insisted on this flower in particular. She sounds so manipulating. Is she a spoiled brat? Like a rich person? My only experience with her before this episode was that one story in Mobius Legends. And she had a better design in that, but her personality was nothing like this. She, was, she wasn't doing anything like this. Which defeats the whole purpose of having a story about her if she's nothing like her. But maybe it's just that she was based off the reboot version of her, and the reboot has her nothing like how she is in the show, kind of defeating the purpose of having her in the comic. Then Robotnik says that Breezy is his secret agent, and has Sonic running in circles all over Mobius. Okay, so why was Breezy willingly working for Robotnik. She doesn't have to do that at all. I mean, she could just stay with Sonic if she's scared of Robotnik and wants protection from him. She could get a better hiding place. It really doesn't appeal to me seeing Robotnik like this with all this unnecessary visual humor around him. It's really weird. If he looked like Eggman, this would kind of make sense. Why give him menacing black and red eyes and then make him like this? It's completely incongruent. We see a village of humans with some kids playing in it. Well, that's surprising for the show, but it doesn't make sense since Robotnik's a human. Where the hell would Robotnik come from if there weren't humans on Mobius? And Robotnik plans to destroy that village by flooding it, by tunneling to the main Mobius reservoir, because I guess there's only one main reservoir on the whole planet and stealing its water. Why, though? Why? Well, 
benefit could that possibly give him? He's eliminating a source of taxpayer money that way. And Grounder shows a conscience asking what will happen to all the people. But what will happen to all the people? Why would he have the program did to him instead of not caring at all? If he has a conscience, why would he work for Robotnik? Wouldn't that overpower his loyalty? I've heard some call me Johnny say that Sonic works better with comedy than environmental message. But, well, first of all, I haven't laughed once at the show. And second, an environmental message is the only thing that gives Robotnik regular goals that make sense, other than go fight Sonic and get humiliated over and over again. So obviously that doesn't really work as a villain thing, then. Because he doesn't get major victories. At all. Ever. Sonic arrives at Breezy and starts shivering for a long time, making me feel sorry for him. But of course he doesn't have hypothermia and needs to go to the hospital, so that was pointless. Tails says, can't you see how tired, she tired he is? With horrible acting. Like, Sadie Ant didn't really have an acting problem, so I'm surprised this officially licensed show would have me regularly complaining about the acting. Why are you so mean to Sonic? I love that Tails asks her why she's so mean to Sonic, like, just being blunt like that. But then she tells him to die and throws him into a river. I was surprised that she actually did that after she told him to go fall in a river. I thought she would just leave it at that. She then tells Scratch that now he takes orders from her. That was stupidly gutsy of her. How, how does she know that Robotnik's not going to find out and get mad at her? I can imagine the only reason she'd be a villain other than brainwashing is that she's scared of Robotnik and being a coward for self-preservation. But she's not scared of him if she's going behind his back like this. Scratch says he has a magnet to use against Sonic, and Grounder says he plans to cut down a tree on Sonic. Breezy calls Grounder out on cutting the tree early. Seriously, why is she doing this? That's stupid, it doesn't make any sense. She lives on this planet, why would she want Sonic to, to be gone? When I heard that Breezy was in the show working for Eggman, I had assumed- Oh, she is a robot. So, I did remember that right. She just looks like a non-robot from the outside, and she has a chest panel that opens up. Okay, so if Robotnik can trick Sonic with organic-looking robots, then why doesn't he constantly do this and ruin Sonic trust in everybody? Kidnapping a village and replacing them with a whole bunch of infiltrators. Why didn't he make an infiltrated robot of Tails? Why didn't he make an infiltrated robot of Sonic and ruin his reputation? What an idiot! Tails doesn't get Tails doesn't get to be useful and warn Sonic about Breezy and get him to realize she's evil. So why is he here? Instead, him being with them accomplishes nothing. He gives her a poem to tell her how he feels. This isn't characteristic of Sonic at all, especially this early. And Sonic runs on a conveyor belt trap, and gets caught by the electrocuting magnet. At least he's having a moment of vulnerability for a change. I guarantee you he won't be actually injured by the electricity though. Predictably though, Breezy feels touched by the poem because the plot was begging for a twist. Why would the kind of cartoonville nut job who would work for a botnik willingly have a reaction like this. She was completely heartless before. Why are you so mean to Sonic? And now all of a sudden she saves Sonic when she was making Fiona Fox look heroic. She sounds so insincere when she asks Sonic to speak to her. Her acting is terrible. The ground opens up beneath Scratch, I guess because of Robotnik, and Breezy saves Sonic. Surprisingly, she tells him the truth, and then she tells him that Robotnik's going to flood a village for no reason. Again, she doesn't sound sincere when she tries to sound panicked. The acting doesn't sell this at all. Sonic effortlessly defeats Robotnik, and reads a poem by Breezy showing how conflicted she is that she's crying when she's a robot. Kind of having the same arc as Nicole does. She'll, she'll probably never be seen again, and I'm glad because she feels like Madonna from the Sonic 1 prototype, or Elise. Part of the big problem with her besides her manipulative, seductress acting and behavior in this episode is that she's too tall to look like she's compatible with Sonic in that way, so it's just uncomfortable. Oh, and this is the most famous, really out of place, uncomfortable Sonic Says message, which has absolutely nothing to do with the episode since we didn't 
see Breezy doing that to Sonic. Oh, of course. But if someone tries to touch you in a place or in a way to make you feel uncomfortable, that's no good. Hey, who, who, is, who is he even talking to? A camera that broadcasts his message to kids in a town somewhere? What town? There's no knot hole on this show. Sure, some anvils need to be dropped, but how did this make it past the censors? Like, even referencing this. This is the least annoying episode so far, but it's still annoying. Well, in theory, I love the idea that Breezy actually fell for Sonic because of the poem. It still makes no sense. She's a robot. Which... She's a robot, which at least explains why she plotted against Sonic properly. But then why did you have the free will to make Scratch take orders from her instead and go save Sonic and stop Robotnik's plan? She went from a complete monster through Tails into the River to his death, which kind of put Fiona slapping Tails to shame, to randomly turning good just because of one poem, which when she shouldn't care, she should expect that. That, that wasn't written all that naturally, and neither was Robotnik's main plan. Why would he try to destroy a village? Was it full of freedom fighters plotting against him off screen? Did they have a nuke or some kind of missile to use against him? He doesn't work as a villain acting like this. It would have made more sense if he was building a factory or something, causing some kind of environmental damage, like a, a, a dam, like destroying a dam, and that would have threatened the village by accident. Robotnik's character is supposed to be the evil industrialist who's ruling the world. Ruling, not destroying. Without that identity, what is he? He doesn't look like Eggman, so him being goofy and having no reason for anything he's doing just feels stupid to me. What's wrong with Robotnik being written to cause environmental damage? Why did they think not having him like that in the show was acceptable? Well, this was the best episode so far thanks to the twist around Breezy, the whole episode was frustrating because she made Sonic look like an idiot, constantly running around doing errands for a girl just because he thought she looked pretty somehow, when I'd expect the, the edgy anti-hero to be irritated and quit on her, not be a pushover. And while I expected Tails to do something since I was enjoying him disliking her and standing up to her, it turned out he was completely useless, so his dislike of her was also useless. When the episode had been building up to him doing something, I thought that he would save the day, not Breezy. That would have made actual sense. And since Breezy wasn't destroyed after this, what explanation will there be for her not continuing to date Sonic and be around for the rest of the show? I guarantee you there will be nothing, because the show doesn't want us to get invested in it and respect it as a result. I don't really want her to date Sonic since she looks terrible. I'd rather be Amy or even Sally since it's not like she's the same height as him. But I would've expected that at the end of the episode she would angst about how she doesn't deserve to be with Sonic since she mistreated him so much and Tails would tell Sonic that she threw him into the river telling him to die. And that would've properly explained why she never gets seen around him again. But still, Sonic seems to like her, so why wouldn't he go after her? Keep in mind, I'm typing this out having not seen the episodes after this. I'm just assuming there won't be a proper continuity. But at least I don't have much reason to expect continuity from this show, where chances are nothing else that should have permanent ramifications will happen to make me question the lack of continuity. But so far this is the first example of that. 